The Bible is the best bestseller the world has ever known. Nearly 6 billion copies of the Bible have been printed and parts of the Bible have been translated into nearly 3,000 languages and dialects. No other book has had as significant a contribution to Western civilization as the Bible has had, perhaps all of civilization. Over the centuries, the Bible has been attacked, maligned, people have tried to discredit it, they've burnt it, they've destroyed copies, they've made it illegal, and they've imprisoned those who've read it. And yet, after thousands of years, people, many people, millions of people, continue to read the Bible to claim that it's relevant and meaningful to their life, that it challenges them and encourages them. The central figure of history is Jesus Christ, and he's also the central figure of the Bible. And really, if you're looking for answers to any of the, the major questions of life, questions like, uh, is there a point to my life? Is there a purpose to my life? Why are we here? Why do we exist? Is there life after death? How can I know what I personally can live for? Is there meaning for my life personally? How can I live this life in the best possible way? If you're asking any of those questions, then the answers to be found in the person of Jesus, and he's revealed to us in the pages of scripture. For Christians, what we actually believe about the Bible is absolutely crucial. And so in the next few minutes, I'm going to speak through four different scriptures that give us insight into what the Bible is to us and, and how we can apply it to our lives. The first is taken from uh, Paul's letter to, to Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, where he says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. So I'm just going to speak about two different aspects of that verse. The first is that all scripture is inspired by God. What we see in the pages of our Bible is not just what men thought, not just uh, the work of men, but these men were actually inspired by God. His spirit got involved in passing on his message, what he wanted to say through these men. Now it comes through in their specific style because he worked through them, so their personality is involved. But the reality is that the scripture is uh, inspired by God, is actually God's voice to us uh, as people. The second part of that is where he says that it, it helps us to know what is true. Have you ever wondered what's true? I mean, you're facing a situation and one person says one thing and another says another. And how do you really know what's true? Is there a final authority on truth? And as Christians, we believe absolutely there is. And that's revealed to us in the pages of Scripture. It shows us what is true. It gives us a standard and ultimate authority to base our lives on. The second passage of scripture that I'm going to speak about is Hebrews 4 verse 12 where it says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. And what he's saying is that these aren't just lifeless words on a page like in a newspaper or, or something like that, but these are actually contained within them the life and power of God. Now this is a little bit mystical, but I'm going to try and explain it as best I can with an analogy. Picture God's power flowing like a river. And that river always moves in the direction of the Word of God. And so if you want to uh, flow with that power, if you want to flow with that river, then you need to read the Bible in faith, believe it, and choose to live it. And when you do that, God's power actually gets involved in helping you with your life. As your life comes and aligns with the power of His Word, uh, He begins to work through you. The third passage of scripture I'm going to speak about is from Psalm 119 verse 105 where it says that the word of God is like a lamp unto our feet. It's a light for our path. Picture yourself walking along a dark path at night, kind of like a hiking trail, and you're trying to navigate your way and feel your way and uh, along this path and so often that's how it feels uh, for us as we go through life but the Bible is like a lamp to us it's like a light to us and it actually just illuminates the path that we walk it helps us navigate through life and in many ways that's what the Bible does it helps us navigate circumstances and, and, and make decisions to lead our lives as we go along a path in many instances that we've never been down before and we need uh, uh, something someone to help us make decisions to navigate down that path that's what the Bible is to us as Christians. And the last passage I'm going to speak about is Isaiah 14 verse 8 and it says that the grass withers and the flower fades but the word of our God stands forever. You know the world is a rapidly changing place. Civilizations change, society shifts and even in our own lives we experience a variety of different circumstances and events that we've got to walk through. And what it's saying is that in all the change of this world and all the change of our lives, there's one constant, and that is the Bible, the Word of God. It's constant because it's God's Word that He's inspired and He's breathed and He's given to us. Uh, and it's so comforting and I think so necessary to have a standard for us, something that's always constant, that's always solid, no matter how much change we go through, that there's something that's constant that we can base our life upon. In Matthew 7, Jesus tells us a story about two men. One of them builds his house on sand, 
and the other one builds his house on rock. And he says the guy who, who builds his house on, on sand is kind of like building your house on something that's shifting, uh, shaping maybe his popular opinion of the day, uh, whatever flavor of the day comes along. Um, and the other guy, he builds his house on solid rock. And this is the guy who builds his life on the Word of God, on the teachings of Jesus. And what happens to these two men is that their, their lives, their house, which represents their lives, their lives are tested by trials and tough circumstances. And this will happen to all of us during the course of our lives. And it's in the toughest moments of our lives that we really figure out what we built our lives upon. And does the foundation that we have, does it really stand? In the story, the guy who built his life on the sand, on popular opinion and, and things that shift and change, his house collapses. But the guy who builds his house on, on rock, which is the word of God, his life stands and endures. Um, I think it's so necessary for all of us uh, to have something in our lives that's constant, that's changing, that we know is inspired by God, absolutely true, that's alive and powerful um, and is never going to change. And for those of us who read the Bible and believe it, that's what the Bible is to us.